how aerodynamic was the Ford Model T, the original car? Let's find out. It's going at its top speed of 45 miles per hour, and there are some terrible sections, but some okay ones too. We need to remember that the car was released in 1908, just five years after the Wright brothers' first flight. So aerodynamics wasn't a thing in the automotive industry. In fact, cars were barely a thing in the automotive industry. Surprisingly, the wake at the back isn't too bad considering just how blocky the car is. The flow is quite fast still, registering just 25% slower than the free stream speed. There is even some kind of prehistoric diffuser at the back that is helping reduce the wake size. The wake is going slightly down at an angle, which is partly because the flow over the roof is somehow better behaved than the flow under the car. But the front isn't very good because it is just too flat. Again, they knew very little about aerodynamics back then, but from a modern perspective, having such a blunt front and then a sharp right angle to the hood means that you get a lot of flow hitting the front, decelerating, increasing the pressure there, which increases the drag. And then as it manages to limp over the front corner, it separates, which causes even more drag. But one consolation is that because there is a decent wake from the front, the very flat front windshield isn't seeing as much high velocity flow hitting it, which actually helps reduce its drag. Then you have this little jaunty visor, which slices straight through the flow, and the air has no choice but to separate, causing much of the roof to be in a wake. And surprisingly, the flow over the jaunty visor actually accelerates a little, which is less to do with the car being streamlined, but more to do with having all this fluid now having to get over this blocky front, so it has to accelerate to rush through. Looking at the pressure, the accelerated flow, and even the wake over the front part of the roof results in very low pressure, which means this region is producing lift, and that would reduce the car's stability if it could go fast enough. As expected, there are very high pressure zones at the front of the grille and the windshield, which dramatically increases the drag. But for me, the pressure in the wake is very surprising. Yes, it is low, but not nearly as low as you might expect from such a blocky object, and that is mainly because the flow still has some energy back there. So the Ford Model T has a lower drag because the pressure in the wake is higher than what you might expect. Now the Model T features the old timey wheel arches, and the front ones in particular really mess with the flow, because it doesn't stay attached so large wakes are created and travel downstream over the cabin. But again, I am quite impressed with how well the cabin does, because sure, it's a brick, but looking at the wake, it isn't that bad. It dies out about one car length downstream, and the bottom half is worse than the top half. So I think the bottom half's wake is really exacerbated because of the undercarriage and the wheels and their arches, while the top half is more representative of the cabin itself. One major advantage the Model T has over modern cars is its wheels. They are super thin, even thinner than the ham you get in a Subway sandwich, if that's even possible. As a result, they don't create much of a wake. We can see from the rear wheel here that there is only a bit of a wake at the base and near the top, and that's it. Looking from on top, the wheel arches are producing far more wake for their size than they should be. The front wheel arched wakes also fan out and encompass the rest of the flow, which means that any aero device downstream would be rendered pretty much inert. This is the drag and immediately, it's clear that most of the car is engulfed in it. The front, because it is so blunt, produces a lot of drag, so do the wheel arches, but looking closely at the front wheels, they don't produce that much drag. And interestingly, even for such thin wheels, we still see the jetting vortex and the drag associated with it. Then as expected, the rear is a sorry state of affairs. Oh no, the drag coefficient dropped off the charts, came in at 0.91, which is less than a cube, so that's something I guess. Peace out amigos.